The 1.6 million acre Mojave National Preserve is in the heart of the Mojave Desert. The preserve was established to preserve outstanding natural, cultural, and scenic resources while providing for scientific, educational, and recreational interests for current and future generations. Three of North America's four deserts, the Mojave, Great Basin, and Sonoran, meet in the preserve to form an immense transition zone with sand dunes, volcanic cinder cones, desert scrubland, and mountaintop forests. Mojave is a land of great diversity. Travel across America with me as we go to the Kelso Depot, a side trip to the Kelso Dunes, Rings Trail, and travel down into a lava tube. Be sure to watch my short about Zyzix. Yeah, that ZZYZX place. The link is in the description below. A four mile long gravel road, six miles west of Baker off I-15, leads you to Zyzix. What a beautiful place. What a worthwhile stop in the Mojave National Preserve. And you won't want to miss my video on Climb on Mojave's Rings Trail. What a fun thing to do. It is a trail that you have to climb down or climb up some rings that have been drilled into the rock. This is Banshee Canyon. You'll want to learn about the legends of why it's called Banshee Canyon. What an experience in the desert of California. The link is in the description below. But today we're focusing on two main stops. That's Kelso and the Lava Tube. Our first stop is the Lava Tube. When you drive across the Mojave Desert on I-15 or Cal Baker Road, smooth cone-shaped mounds grace the horizon. 32 red and black cinder cones interspersed with lava flows dot the landscape. These little volcanoes, because of their abundance and desert preservation, the area was designated the Cinder Cone National Natural Landmark in 1973. Access to the lava tubes is via five and a half miles of dirt road through a sandy wash. Four-wheel drive is recommended. From the parking area, walk uphill about 300 yards to a rock cairn on the right, marking a beaten path up the cinder cone. This path leads up to the entrance to the lava tube. You'll see the stairs. The lava tube is not maintained by the National Park Service, so enter at your own risk. This lava tube near the center cones was found through a collapsed hole in the roof, providing an opportunity to see inside this river of rocks. Lava tubes are a blast to go in. It's sort of like caving, but generally the lava tubes are much taller and more spacious and not as demanding. The lava tube here at Mojave National Preserve certainly is photogenic. Now let's head to the Kelso Depot. You'll want to get a park map in advance so you know exactly where to go and how to get to these stunning sites. Let's head down to the Kelso Depot where you will find very handy restrooms and the main visitor center. But I do need to warn you, it is not always open. But even if the building isn't open and you can't go see all the great artifacts inside, usually there is a park ranger outside to give you directions, information, and get your park pass book stamp. Please subscribe to Kel Baker and SEMA Road provide the major access to the high points of this grand reserve. Every time we go to the Kelso Depot, I have to take a picture of this post office. It's so photogenic. The Kelso Depot Visitor Center, Mohawk. Mojave National Preserve. The railroad town of Kelso in Mojave National Preserve was named in 1905 by railroad construction workers. Two men placed their names in a hat, along with that of a third who had just moved away. The name drawn from the hat was that of John H. Kelso, the man absent from the drawing. That is so funny. The Kelso Depot was built by the Union Pacific Railroad in 1924 to service the steam engines that made the climb up the steep SEMA grade. The depot closed in 1985 and today is one of only two remaining railroad stations built in the Spanish style architecture. That's horrible. But there's only two left. Kelso Depot seems like a quiet anomaly in the middle of this desert. But for the Union Pacific Railroad, it was a thriving necessity. Since its inception in 1862, the Union Union Pacific wanted a foothold on the West Coast, and after reaching Portland, Oregon, the Union Pacific turned its attention to the rich California markets and the ports around Los Angeles. To get there, it needed to construct a railroad across the Mojave Desert. Kelso was crucial to reaching that goal. The history of this railroad is definitely something to pursue if you love railroad history. One little tidbit, they had to have helper engines to get up the steep climb between Kelso and Kessler Summit. Kessler Summit has been renamed 
named Seema. From the mid-1940s to 1985, this two-cell strap steel jail was used to confine drunks and other unruly individuals for a night or two. The jail's original location was west of the Kelso Depot on the far side of Cal Baker Road. The jail's cement pad foundation can still be found there. The jail was removed from Kelso in 1985, the same year that the Union Pacific Railroad closed the Kelso Depot. It ended up in the backyard of Ron and Kay Mahoney in Barstow, California. Barstow's not far away. Two decades later, Kay Mahoney donated it to the National Park Service when the Kelso Depot reopened as a visitor center in 2005. Thank you, Kay. Isn't it the cutest thing? Um, there weren't any drunks in there when we were there. Besides the on-duty ranger and the displays inside the visitor center, there are also signs outside. If it's closed and there's no ranger available, there are plenty of signs to give you lots of historical background on this gorgeous structure. Isn't it gorgeous? I just love this thing. And the blue sky and the palm trees, you can't beat it. Well, at least in my opinion. Here's the train bulletin. Let's see. Westbound, eastbound. The number 19 train is the Continental Limited. It's due at 10.15 a.m. Oh, that's soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Our next stop was the Kelso Dunes. We didn't really have time, but we wanted to drive and get a little bit closer look at the Kelso Dunes. It is a three-mile round trip from the parking area to the top of the dunes. If you've never walked in sand dunes, you can't even imagine how difficult it is trudging through the sand. The trailhead is three miles west of Kel Baker Road on the Kelso Dunes Road. And if you'll notice here, the three things that we did here are just right off Kel Baker Road, one of the major arteries throughout the park. The road is sometimes rough with washboard in places, and that's often an understatement when you're out in the desert. But it does not require a 4x4 vehicle. Early morning and afternoon is the best time to climb because of not only the coloring, but because of the lack of heat. The the hike may take you several hours as you slog through the sand, then slide down the slopes. The reason we didn't stay is we wanted to get to the Rings Trail. You'll want to watch my full video on climbing the Rings Trail. The link is in the description below. Spectacular views as you go through Banshee Canyon. Rings climb, physically demanding, use at own risk. Oh boy, is it worth it. It's so much fun. And on the south end of the trail, you will come across some protected rock art. There is absolutely no no reason to add your own graffiti to this, so please don't. Just enjoy what has been left here, maybe even centuries. The views in the Mojave Desert also include Joshua trees. Have you ever seen a Joshua tree? They're um, kind of a yucca-like looking tree. They like to grow between 3,000 and 4,500 feet elevation, and they can grow quite thick. They're so unique to look at. I just love them. When we left the park that day, we left out through Nipton to stop by and take this photograph of the charming Hotel Nipton. It was built between 1904 and 1910 and it still reflects the railroad, ranching, and mining history of the small community of Nipton. Where's your favorite place to hike in the desert? And don't forget to take water. And you know what? You don't just take it, you got to drink it. Flip-flops on the ground, in the sand. It's an unclassic road trip at its best. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have, thank you. And if you haven't, could you please subscribe?